So in this video, we're going to start discussing the UI of Flame. I touched on a couple of these areas very briefly in the last video, but understand that Flame is really broken down into three different sections or areas that you can control and change and access different things. This top area right here, this is our viewing panel. In this panel, you have several different ways of viewing your media, your projects, your composites as you are working on them. This bottom part down here below the viewing panel is our editing panel. And right now, because we're looking at the default layout, which is the tools tab, we see a bunch of buttons here and different tools that we can access. But as we are working and building our composites and our timelines, our sequences, this area is going to change depending upon what you're doing. You're going to be displaying different parameters of different tools or sequences and conform options and media options and importing stuff. This is where all that is going to be displayed. And along the left hand side, by default, we have our media panel. This is where we're going to organize our projects. We're going to be saving different elements or stages of our projects as we're building them and so on. Going back over to our viewing panel. And if you look in the lower left corner, you see a blue button that reads reels. Point of note, whenever you see a blue button in flame, that generally means it is a flyout to access further options. If I click where it reads reels, you'll see you get different options as to how you want the viewing panel to display your media and your projects that you are working on. We currently have no media imported, so some of these aren't even available to me yet, but just understand this is how you will change the layout of this area. The media panel can be displaying media in icon or thumbnail and so on. In fact, you can go to the media panel here. If you click on where it reads media panel, you get options for full height, full width, hide. And we're going to discuss that more in detail a little bit later. But also notice that there's this little gear for each one of the panels. Now, right now, because we're looking at tools, we don't have a gear. But you'll see later as we do work, this editing panel will also have options depending upon what you're looking at. But if I click on a gear for, say, our viewing panel, I get all these different options that are relevant to the viewing panel. If I click on the gear over here for the media panel, I get all these options that are relevant to the media panel. Makes sense, right? Now let's take a look at the bottom center part of our UI, where we see five different tabs. We see Tools, Batch, Timeline, Conform, and Media Hub. These tabs are different preset layouts of your UI so you can perform specific tasks. To access each one of them, you obviously can just click on it. So if I click on Batch, we go into the Batch environment. This is the node-based compositing environment for Flame. My viewing area now is a schematic by default. We'll be coming and looking at this quite a lot, but look where it says Viewing. It says Batch Schematic. So I now have a schematic view. And then down in the editing panel, I now have all these different bins with all the tools that are available to me when I'm working in batch. If I click the timeline tab, now the editing area is where I would create sequences and timelines. And then once you start to create your sequences and timelines, you can then control what the viewing area or how the viewing area is going to display those sequences and the work that you are currently doing. If I go to the Conform tab, here's where we can conform XML files, AAF files, EDL files. So we can bring timeline and work that's done in an outside editor into Flame to then finish it or continue working on it. Lastly, there's the Media Hub. I click on this. Now I can access all attached storage, whether it's local or networked, so I can go and import media. You will also use the Media Hub to export your media. So once your work is done and you want to generate the end result, you would come into the Media Hub to do that. Each one of these tabs is accessible through a hotkey, holding the space bar and clicking F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 will allow you to access each tab. So space bar F5, I go to my tools tab. Space bar F4, I go to batch. Space bar F3, I go to my timeline. Space bar F2, conform. Space bar F1, media hub. I will mention it even though it was pretty obvious. You'll notice that the media panel was available or displayed by default in every single one of those tabs. I'm gonna go back to our tools tab for right now. The media panel is a pretty important part of your workflow inside of Flame. 
We are in a workspace. You have one workspace by default when you created the project, and it's going to match the name of the project. You could come and rename the workspace if you wanted to. That's not going to affect the name of the project. That's only the workspace you would be changing. If I right click over the workspace, I get a flyout with several different options as to what to do with the workspace. I'll click away to discard that. And then you'll see we have little triangles to collapse and expand different elements of our workspace. If I collapse the workspace, you'll notice everything besides the shared libraries is hidden. That's because everything you see here inside the media panel, except for shared libraries, is part of this workspace. Once again, shared libraries are relevant to when you are working with other artists. Maybe someone's using Flare or Flame Assist or Luster, and you can share libraries between those other artists that you're working with. And we're not going to get into that with inside this video, but that's why it's a separate entity than this workspace. But I'll expand our workspace once again, and you'll see we've got a desktop. And in that desktop or on that desktop, you have what's called the batch groups. And then there's the real groups. And then there's the libraries. And inside that library, we have one default library. But I'm just trying to stress that all of that is part of this workspace. And you can have multiple workspaces available to you and open inside of Flame. Now, obviously, as you saw, I can use these triangles to hide, collapse, expand, and so on, different parts of my workspace. But you see above our workspace name, there are some tabs to control or display only specific parts of your workspace. There's the desktop. Now I'm looking at only the desktop, which contains the batch groups and the real groups. If I go to the library, now I only see my default library and the shared libraries. Now batch, if I go to the batch tab, this is only going to show me the batch groups. So these are really just filters, if you will, to hide, display only parts of your workspace that you want to see while you're working. And obviously the all tab, which is the default one, shows everything. And of course, there are hotkeys that you can use to access these different filters or these different tabs. Holding a command key, hitting F4, I go to the batch tab. Command F3, I go to library. Command F2, I go to my desktop. And Command F1, I go back to view all. And one last thing about these tabs up here. Um, we're not going to be performing a conform, but if I go to the conform tab down along the bottom here, you'll notice that that tab, that red batch, now reads conform. If I click on it, I'm going to have access to the media that is part of the conform process. If I click on the batch tab down on the bottom, you'll notice that it switches back to be in the batch tab. Go to conform again, it switches back to the conform tab. All right, I'm going to go back to all, and I'm going to go back to my tools. In the next video, we'll start importing some media.